Hello everyone, my name is Alana Dior and you are listening to episode one of Good Times with Good Friends. Today's topic is friendship, the realities of friendship and what friendship means to me. Topics may be controversial while other topics may be cliche. Uh, I would say that this is a podcast that you can listen to while working, cleaning, driving, down the road, just doing whatever um, daily activities you're doing. I plan to have many friends co-host this show uh, just to get different opinions from different people. And many of my friends are from different walks of life. So I feel like that will be really interesting. So let's get into today's topic. As I mentioned earlier, today's topic is friendship. And I was just wondering, how could I start this podcast off with my friends without discussing friendship? Um, So friendship and what it means to me is friendship is extremely important for me. I've been one. I've always had friends. Um, I have never had trouble making friends. I feel like I created a lot of special bonds with the individuals that are in my life. Uh, Friends are my sounding board when I need to discuss different ideas. And they are also the people that I lean on in times of vulnerability, and they also lean on me as well. Because I feel like if I can't lean on you during highs and lows, you are my friend. And so now I kind of want to talk about the different types of friends that I have in my life. Um, I feel like I have three categories of friends. I have from back home friends, because I did go to college, so... You know how you have those back home friends versus your college friends? It can get a little, you know, mixed up. And then I feel like I have my Delta sisters. I am a proud member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. And then I also have social work sisters. I majored in social work in undergrad as well as I have my master's in social work. So I feel like I have made um, special friendships with those that are in my classes and Those really are the three main types of friends that I have. What I feel like is needed to be a good friend is trust, vulnerability, and openness. If I can't trust you, why are you my friend? Why am I your friend if you can't trust me? Like, that makes no sense to me. I've seen it happen time and time again. But a lot of times people just throw the word friend around loosely. If I consider you my friend, I'm trusting you. I'm putting my trust in you. I'm not saying I'm putting 100% of trust in you because we're all human. We all make mistakes and do different things. Uh, Number, what the world? And then vulnerability. If I can't be vulnerable to you and you just kind of dismiss my feelings, Or you always have to play devil's advocate in a situation. Why why are you my friend? Why am I your friend if I'm always playing devil's advocate to your situations? Unless you're always in some mess. Because some of y'all out here are always in some mess. Um, And the last one is openness. As a social worker... I am educated on all different people, all different walks of life, all different concepts, all different topics. And so I feel like I've surrounded the people, the people in my life, I've surrounded myself with people who can talk about different topics, people who are open. Some not as open as others, but that's okay because we all don't have the same education about different topics. But in order to be a good friend, you have to be open. You have to be open to trying new experiences. You have, because your friend does not have the same life as you. Now, I'm not saying be stupid in some of those new experiences. I have a friend who wants to go bungee jump. Would I be a good friend if I didn't go bungee jumping with her? Yes, because I'm choosing me at that point. I can be open. I'll stay on there. I'll stay in there and I'll take the video of you, girl, but I'm not going bungee jumping with you. But trust, vulnerability, and openness, I feel like those are three big things that you need to be a good friend. 
Because a part of vulnerability as well is if your friend is vulnerable to you and you don't show empathy to their situation, not sympathy, but empathy. We all can feel for someone, but can you really put yourself in your friend's shoes? Can you really do that? If not, why are you that person's friend? So next, what is not needed to be a good friend? I've already kind of talked about this. Good friends don't need people who play devil's advocate all the time, okay? All the time. Good friends don't need yes men. Don't be somebody's yes men, okay? Okay? Because if you want to be a yes man, I don't need you in my life. Some people need yes man, but that's what they think they need, but that's not what they actually need, right? Like, that's what they want, but it's, it's not what they need. Because nobody needs somebody that's saying yes to things that they shouldn't be doing or any of that. Nobody needs somebody that's co-signing every idea that you have. Somebody has to question something. I don't care if it's like, be like, maybe you should get that in a different color. Somebody has to question something. Everything is not going to be 100% perfect. Everybody's life situations are not 100% perfect. So you need to, sometimes you got to help your friends in their decision making process. Now, you might say yes at first, but then you might say, well, what about this? Like, guide them in a different direction. That's why I say yes men are not needed in order to be a good friend. So how have I maintained my friendships? Um, And I feel like that goes toward picking certain friendships, certain friends. And you have to find people who are morally and spirit or spiritually and or spiritually aligned with you. Majority of my friends are either morally or spiritually aligned with me. So all of my social work friends are not spiritually aligned. We're we're not spiritually, religiously on the same path of life. But morally and wanting to take care of the environment, um, help others in society, want the best for people, um, showing support for social justice and different um, injustices, we are, we are there. And also find people who socially align with you. A lot of times we think that we can just um, become meshed in different friend groups and different things, but not everything is for you. For example, I'm one. I don't like to go out. Like to clubs and different things. I will go out, you know, prior to the pandemic. I haven't been out since the pandemic started. But find someone who likes to do the things that you like to do. That's what, If you like to watch Netflix and then discuss the shows, find those friends who like to watch the same shows as you and then discuss them. If you like to sit on FaceTime and talk on FaceTime every night, Find those friends that want to do that. But you have to find friends that socially align with you. If you're someone who likes to go out and have a great time, find friends who like to go out and have a great time. But don't get mad at the friend that doesn't want to do what you want to do. Because y'all don't align socially. I'm an honest person. So the next way way that I maintain my friendships is by being honest. It's not too many things that I have, haven't been honest about in my friendships. I pick up on vibes. I can tell when things aren't going right. I can tell when you aren't happy. So just be honest. I'm sure they can tell when I'm not happy and when I'm, because I'll get quiet. Like, I don't know about that girl. I don't know about that. So it's just important to be honest. Like I said, we don't need yes men around here. Sometimes your friend does need to hear yes. 
but not don't be a yes man. It's different. Be forgiving. I'm forgiving. But I'm not stupid. So I may forgive you like if you say something to me that's a little off the wall or you may not even realize that it was off the wall what you said, right? Like you just said it out of casual conversation. But I noted it. Now, if you keep saying things that are off the wall, that's when it's like, okay, Alana, don't be stupid. You've been forgiven to this person, but don't be stupid. Another thing is, Adjusting to change is important in friendships. All your friends' schedules are different. Your schedule is different. I'm at a phase in my life right now. I'm transitioning out of... I just graduated with my master's. So my schedule is about to change into a work schedule, which will be different from how my schedule was when I was um, in my master's program and at my internship. I'm going to be more tired from working. So this will change. Uh, People get married. People have babies. People get boyfriends. People get girlfriends. People move. People get different jobs. People go through mental health crises. People are from all different walks of life. So it's important for you to adjust to change. If you want to adjust to change. Now, once that goes back to the, don't be stupid. If things are changing too much and your friend is also not adjusting, don't push it. Don't stay in a situation that's not for you. So maintaining long distance friendships. I just want to say, I have not seen my best friend in person since January of 2020. And she has had a whole child. But we have maintained our friendship through the pandemic and all. We talk weekly. Sometimes we talk twice a week in the morning. We text sometimes throughout the day, depending on the day. But I would say we're still just as close as we were prior to the pandemic. I have another friend. Um, she's actually one of my friends from my master's program. And so we haven't seen each other since March, February of 2020. And I just asked her yesterday, I was like, Hey, I know we're tired of attending zoom university, but would you like to do a zoom lunch next week? Because we need to celebrate these accomplishments and we need to celebrate them together because it's one thing to just text, but I want to talk face to face, but through the internet because we live in different places. So just making those efforts of keeping communication open and going back to the adjusting to change, adjusting to change in, um, people's lives we just had a whole pandemic do you know how much disruption that has caused to people um that was a huge adjustment and so some friendships made it through the pandemic other friendships did not make it through the pandemic my personal role as a friend i feel like it's the same for all of my friends um the first thing is I want if I want to be able to have fun with you. If I can't have fun and laugh, I love to laugh. I love to laugh. If I can't laugh and have fun with you, oh, it's boring. So boring to me. Like, if we can't laugh together, then something is going on. Like, we need to see what's going on with our friendship. Because at this point, we just... It's just not going well. Support. If your friend can't support you, if you can't support your friend, like my personal role as a friend is to support my friends. Like support them in whatever they want to do. I let them know that. You know I will support whatever you decide to do. 
Of course now I may, you know. The another one is accountability. I may remind you like this is going to be the consequence of this, like but but I'm still going to support you, right? Another thing is uplifting them. Oftentimes, especially I'd say in adult friendships, we tend to want to hide and make it seem like everything's okay and that we're like the strongest people and blah, 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 blah. Now, even the strongest people need uplifting. Even friends who don't seem like they need compliments also need compliments and encouragement. <laughs> I haven't done this in a while, but a few years ago, I used to just find inspirational quotes on um, Google and I would just send them to all of my friends. And some of them would say, like, this is, you like, you don't know how much I need this, needed this right now. And that was really, like, important for me to send that to them because I felt like, you know, you never know what someone's really, truly going through. So as a friend, it is my role to uplift them. And so lastly, let's talk about when to let friendships go. When to let friendships go. I would say when you dread picking up the phone to talk to them or to text them back, it's time to let it go. When they stop listening to you and you're trying to help them, like add value to them, to the conversation, if they just saw a on a completely different mindset of yours, it's time to let it go. When they no longer add value to you, you ever dealt with somebody that no longer added value to you? I'm not talking about high value and all that other stuff like that. I'm just saying they're not, like, they're in your life, but they're not in your life. And lastly... But one of the most important ones, when they cross boundaries, I've had friends that cross boundaries and guess what? They not here no more. They here on earth, but they not in my life. It's important for you to be able to say, okay, look, like I said, what did I say that you needed? Trust, vulnerability, openness. Those are the main three things that I feel like you need in order to be a good friend. You violate people's trust and their vulnerability when you violate and cross boundaries. So I feel like it is super important to be able to let friendships go that are no longer adding value to your life. And when people cross boundaries and when you just dread their presence. That's not doing anything, but you're carrying baggage at that point in life. But it's important to surround yourself with individuals that you love and that love you. And that they just don't provide regular love. I'm not talking about regular love, like high by love. Talking about unconditional love. I try to provide my friends with unconditional love. They know I'm there for them. I tell them that. You know I'm here for you. And so I think it's super important for me to be able to share the experiences that not only I have went through with friends, but also that they have went through with friends, as well as share our different opinions on different topics and just kind of go through that um, experience because I feel like people don't value friends anymore the way that they should but there are still friend groups out there and you can find them you can find a friend group for yourself so yeah so I think next week's topic will be graduate school experiences I'm hoping to get some friends on here who will be willing to talk about graduate school experiences I have different friends that are in 
that were in the social work program with me as well as in uh, other programs. And so I'm hoping that we can have a good conversation as friends. Anyway, thank you for listening. And I look forward to reading you all's comments. And please continue to like and subscribe. Thank you. Bye. So here's a little background about good times with good friends. On this show, we will discuss different topics and give our opinions about each topic. Some topics may be controversial, while other topics may be cliche. Uh, I would say that this is a podcast that you can listen to while working, cleaning, driving, down the road, just doing whatever um, daily activities you're doing. I plan to have many friends co-host this show uh, just to get different opinions from different people. And many of my friends are from different walks of life, so I feel like that will be really interesting. So let's get into today's topic. As I mentioned earlier, today's topic is friendship. And I was just wondering, how could I start this podcast off with my friends without discussing friendship? Um, So friendship and what it means to me is friendship is extremely important for me. I've been one. I've always had friends. Um, I have never had trouble making friends. I feel like I created a lot of special bonds with the individuals that are in my life. Uh, Friends are my sounding board when I need to discuss different ideas. And they are also the people that I lean on in times of vulnerability. And they also lean on me as well. Because I feel like if I can't lean on you during highs and lows, you are my friend. And so now I kind of want to talk about the different types of friends that I have in my life. Um, I feel like I have three categories of friends. I have from back home friends because I did go to college. So you know how you have those back home friends versus your college friends. It can get a little, you know, mixed up. And then I feel like I have my Delta sisters. I am a proud member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. And then I also have social work sisters. I majored in social work in undergrad as well as I have my master's in social work. So I feel like I have made um, special friendships with 